What's up, y'all? Typically, Dale I Ghetto here. I'm sitting down with Tom Ward from Under the Influencer. We're, we're getting real intimate and real deep. It's crazy. with Timothy De La Ghetto. I love your name. Thanks, man. You're a comedian, a <laughs> yeah. rapper, a foodie, a podcaster. <laughs> Am I missing anything? Um, artist. Okay. Philanthropist. Are you really? No, not really. Not at all. <laughs> I want to see your tax returns. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. No charity at all. No. All right. Um, uh, a lover. Uh, and a friend. Um, and a friend. Hmm. And um, uh, I, I, I like musicals. I watch a lot of musicals. What are you watching? Um, I hate musicals. Really? I love no musicals. No one sings dude. in real life. Um, no, 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 I'm talking about. I'm talking about like I go to like Broadway shows and shit. Oh, do you really? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You ever see the Book of Mormon? No, and I love those guys too. I oh, love Trey Parker. Dude, and... It's so funny, bro. Is it? Yeah. It, yeah does it show yeah. out here too? Um, it was out or here for a little York? bit. Yeah, it's mainly New York. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I gotta check that. I love those guys. Dude, I used to do musicals in high school and shit. So it's like you know. Yeah. So what was your content? So I started like I was watching a bunch of your videos. Mm-hmm. It's so funny. Your clickbaity kids clickbaity titles work. I mean, you, they, they, the Asian nip slip. They definitely did back then. Oh, Asian nip slip was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Creepy guys like Asian tits. I on know. YouTube or whatever the, thing, pops the, up. the thing about that video is it makes me no money because. Why? Well, because videos that get flagged as inappropriate don't really get that money. Uh, they have gotcha. much money. And um, that video in particular, if you don't know what he's talking about, I have a video that is a trailer of like a sneak peek of a video I did like years ago with my boys. It was like a little behind the scenes thing of a huge video I was doing with my boys called The Kings of YouTube. It was like a rap video, funny rap video. And there's one little part where I'm dressed as a girl and I take my nipple out. And I use that as the thumbnail and I call it, and I, it, for a long time it was called Asian Nip Slip, right? That video has like 70, 80 million views. Yeah. Um, but it makes like a penny a month because <laughs> it's in that like porn side of YouTube where oh. people are like looking for porn and all these like weird things start getting suggested. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, so yeah, that one doesn't make me any money. No kidding. You know, when I got on YouTube, there was like no such thing as like- That was 06, right? Yeah, yeah, there was no that, like, you're like YouTube an OG. was brand new. No one even knew what YouTube was. Yeah, was it no wasn't a thing. career. Yeah, exactly. There was no such thing as like YouTube famous or even like, there was there was no money in it when yeah. I got in. There was no like such thing as monetization. You yeah. know, there's no ads on videos, you know? So I was just kind of doing it just to get my face out there. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and I remember feeling like I, I could tell that my parents finally were understanding what was happening. Because you know how parents always like to brag to their kids. Oh, brag to their friends about their kids, yeah. right? And I remember my, my parents always, they used to be like, oh, you know, my son goes to college for this and that. And he kind of does like these little videos on the side. And then one day I heard my parents talking to their friends and they were like, oh, you know, my son's famous on YouTube. And I was like, oh, it's legit. <laughs> they, they, they take it seriously now. Yeah, you know another parent's probably like, what's YouTube? Yeah, they don't, what's know, YouTube they don't know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so... Um, I, you know, they, they, be, they began to understand and, and it always helps when, uh, the money is coming in too. You know what I'm saying? That's the main thing that makes it like legitimizes it. You know what I'm saying? It's not a hobby anymore. It's not a hobby anymore. Especially when, you know, I remember one time my mom was like, Hey, you're, you're still going to get your degree, right? This is way after I dropped out. And I was like, mom, do you want me to like, do you want me to go back and get my degree or like, do you want me to keep paying for your shit? You know? <laughs> She's like, okay, 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 fine, fine, fine. <laughs> so you're doing the YouTube thing. How, like, when did you start making money at it? What was the scene like in 2006? 2006, man. When did you see. start making dough? I was in college, started making YouTube videos. I was just making little stupid movies with my boys. Um, I was, I think I was working at Foot Locker. So you I, had a job too. You were doing yeah, the whole deal. Yeah, I mean, there's no money in YouTube. So. Yeah. I was either working at Foot Locker or maybe I was at California Pizza Kitchen at that point. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, man, just hustling, just making little silly videos yeah. and working. And um, and I think uh, I, I was at California Pizza Kitchen. I got fired. Uh, what did you get fired for? I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. I, um, so <laughs> when I was working at California Pizza Kitchen, um, we used to have we used to wear white button ups and red ties. I really like that outfit. Black pants. It looked real cool, right? And then one day we heard that they were switching to uh, black button ups. That's, I think, what they still wear. Yeah, it's all black, well, now, right? now it's kind of, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? I haven't been in a while. So they were switching to black button ups. And uh, in my head, back then, I didn't want to wear all black. I love wearing all black now, but back then, I was like, I don't feel like wearing all black. So 
you know, Twitter wasn't nearly as popping as it is now back mm -hmm. then. So I tweeted at California Pizza Kitchen. I was like, black button ups are the lamest shit ever, right? <laughs> Just because I was bored at work. And then I check my phone and uh, I see a DM and they're like, oh, thank you for, you for your opinion on our new uniforms. What store do you work at? I was like, oh shit, I'm not gonna answer that. I yeah. deleted it, right? Deleted the tweet, left it alone. But what happened was, because there was no information about me on my Twitter, okay. except for a link to my YouTube. And my YouTube said I was from Long Beach. Uh, so someone- California Pizza Kitchen was not fucking they around. They were not fucking around, bro. So someone <laughs> called, someone from CPK called the GM of all the Long Beach California Pizza Kitchen. What's he, California Pizza Kitchen private eye? <laughs> I guess so, man. They called and were like, hey, do you know this kid? To the general manager. And she's like, yeah, that's Tim. And they're like, well, you got to fire him. Because back then, I guess there was something in the handbook that said you're not allowed to publicly just like talk shit about the company on any public forum or something wow. like that. Um, and also there was a tweet, they cited this tweet in my firing that I said, time to go to work at California Skeetza Kitchen. <laughs> they didn't like that. So I got fired. But here's what happened. So you asked me when I started making money, right? Yeah. I was making a li little, little checks from YouTube at this, at this point. Mm -hmm. But the week I got fired from California Pizza Kitchen, I had won a YouTube contest for like $15,000. What was the contest? It was um, an HP laptop. Remember they used to do those commercials where like you couldn't see people's heads, but you could see them like doing stuff oh, yeah. with, the, with just whatever. And it was like make your own HP commercial basically. So I did one where I was rapping and I was like, I was rapping about like just what I could do with my laptop and shit like that. And, um, and also I had, a, I had a little following on YouTube at that point. How so, big was your following? I want to say probably like, Maybe like a few hundred thousand or something oh, like wow. that. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty big. Yeah. So it's like I had people, I had my, my people vote for me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I, I won this contest for like 15 Gs. And, um, and it was the same week I got fired. I was like, oh, this is a sign. You know what I'm saying? So now I can kind of concentrate on actually creating more content. And you got money in the bank. Yeah. I got a little money that I can live off of for a little bit. So I was able to go hard on the content. And um, man, that was back in 2009. Okay. So it took three years. To really make yes. it, it turn took, it from a hobby to a career. Yeah, it took three years before I was officially like jobless and just doing YouTube. Yeah. Good message for you kids out there. It took them three years. Dude, these kids are in my DMs all the time talking about, bro, I, I made my first video last month. No one's watching. What's wrong? I'm like, bruh, I've been doing this shit for 10 years. I still feel like <laughs> I'm barely getting my foot in the door of what yeah. I'm trying to do, you yeah. know? It's hard as fuck <laughs> to grow a YouTube channel, especially now. Yeah. You had the benefit of starting early where there wasn't as much competition. Definitely. Could you succeed now, you think, if you were, you know, the same age starting out now? You know, I feel like um, it, 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 it would definitely be way harder. I, I would still feel like I'd be able to succeed just because, like, you know, think, I, you think, got that thing. I think I'm the shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. The, yeah I just, I'm, I'm confident in what I do, right? Yep. But it would definitely be way more difficult now because it's so, you know, like saturated. And yeah. You know, back when I started, I always tell people like there was no such thing as YouTube famous. I was trying to be like famous famous. You yeah. Know? But now these kids that start, they want to be YouTube famous. They don't want to be famous famous. They just, they just, they see what the YouTubers are doing and yeah. they want that. It's you a know. good life, man. You see these kids rolling around Lambos. I mean, it's definitely they live a good in Calabasas. Life. Uh, you know, out. but they're also they're throwing their money away. They're not investing anything, bro. They're renting these houses that you see in the vlogs. Yeah. They're not actually owning these houses. It's crazy. They're pissing all their money away on they're, the new G wagon. They're pissing it all away. I they know. don't get it. I know. It's crazy. The rent they're paying alone they're, is staggering, uh, dude. They're the you know, and and the kids watch these vlogs, and and what's what's sad is like. A lot of, I feel like, the up-and-coming YouTubers that um, are beginning to get a little money, mm -hmm. I feel like they move into these extravagant houses just for the, the vlogs and, yeah. the, and, the, like, and the clout of it. And it's like, they don't realize how silly it is. Because it's like, dude, you don't need a fucking... You don't need a house in the hills right now with the view for your vlogs. They're, no. they're throwing away, like... Like, I don't know, man. A lot of money a month. Yeah, and I always tell people this, too. This is my hobby. Like, I got a real job. Right, I got two right. little kids at home. Right. I'm not going to quit that and put go all in on YouTube this time. Right. You know, until you start making the... Like you said, three years. Yeah. You know, kids, get a job. Man, these kids are throwing away that money to rent. It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you get Wildin' Out? Um, someone told me that Nick Cannon was bringing Wild and Out back, and I remember as a little kid watching, I was like, I remember thinking, wow, I would, I would, I would kill this show because I was, you know, funny and I was rapping. You yeah, know? Um, it's a good combo. Yeah. So, I heard Nick Cannon was bringing Wild and Out back. I followed him on Twitter, and then uh, one day, hold on, I'll hold for that plane. 
that is a fucking pro. <laughs> I say we leave that shit in just to show <laughs> Timothy De La Ghetto on fucking point. A lot of people don't listen. For, they're yeah, not paying attention. I you know? like that. Uh, I mean, and well, and side tangent, and that also comes from me being on YouTube for so long and doing my shit independently. Is I I know both sides of how things work. You yeah. know what I'm saying because I for a long time and and even now like. I have to hire my own crew and like I, you know, I'm working with the sound guys and the, everything to get the shit done. You yeah. Know? Uh, so anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, I follow him Ken on Twitter and one day he tweeted, who's the funniest person online? Whoever gets the most retweets of hashtag Wildin' Out needs me, I'll audition personally. So I had my, my, my minions yes. uh, retweet and then um, and someone DM'd me. Saying, "Hey, if you're serious about auditioning, contact this person, and we'll and you know we'll audition you." And um, and also, uh, while I was retweeting all that, I, I knew somebody that knew one of the producers who called me personally and was like, "Hey, if you really want to audition, I'll get you in the room." I was like, "Okay, cool." So it was kind of both like, you know, I was in there, you mm-hmm. know. And then um, I went on the audition. It was like maybe like a room of like ten people. Nick was in there. Um, How nervous are you going into that? I this was, is your shot, man. I was definitely nervous. This is your title yeah. fight. You know, I was nervous, but I was I was super confident, you know, because um, I'm more nervous going into auditions where I have to um, do lines, even though like I love acting. Okay. I, I always feel like I'm I'm not the best auditioner when it comes to lines. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But this was me being me, like uh, just they had me freestyle and they had me play some improv games, which I was used to doing because you know it's just from doing improv classes and mm-hmm. drama and stuff. And um, and it just worked out. And then they had called me back for like a group audition where it was like other would be cast members in there. We're just seeing how we work together. And then they called me the next week and like, hey, you're on the show. And um, and that's then, the game change. And that's right? the game change. I mean, it was for me more than anything. It was it was um, it validated me. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been telling people for years, ever since I was like a little kid, like I'm gonna be on TV. Yeah. You know, and this was like years of people being like, "Ah, oh, you know, you know, you know, you'll never be on TV." Yeah, like, yeah. You know, but like, I'm big on YouTube. Ah, who gives a right? Fuck? And like people, people don't give a shit about YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So for for me to I'm on MTV to take it to that next level was like, okay, I told you, you know, yeah. like I told you guys, this is what I was gonna do. You know, where did that confidence come from? <sighs> I think my my parents just hugged me a lot as a little kid. <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> parents hug your kids. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't know. I mean. I, I feel like, I mean, yeah, maybe just my parents just showed me a lot of love, you know, growing up. I mean, my parents always encouraged everything I wanted to do. Like, I was always a really uh, weird, creative, only child. You know, I was always, like, drawing and making up stuff. Um, Even my teachers, you know, would, like, tell my parents, wow, Tim has a really, uh, like, um, different imagination, and Mm -hmm. that's good. And people were always encouraging me, you know. And, um, And I watched a lot of sitcoms and TV growing up. I what feel was like, your stuff growing up? What was your show? Man, you know, I mean... You know, I want to talk 90 Day Fiance later with you <laughs> and the Lakers and the NBA you know, offseason. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, I mean, shit, man. I watched so much TV growing up as an only child. Like, everything from, like, you know, I Love Lucy to, like... You oh, know, some of the classics. Golden Girls to, like, you know, Family Matters, Fresh Prince, of course. Like, I, I watched a lot of sitcoms and I, you know, it sounds, it sounds a little funny, but I feel like they were a good foundation for me just in terms of like how to um, be confident and also be nice to people. Yeah. Uh, Because it's all about, you know, love and family and all that. But also like a lot of these characters, like the Fresh Prince, I feel like the Fresh Prince really taught me how to be confident and talk to girls and and not care what people think and just kind of, you know, be yourself because Will was so goofy, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And also Urkel, Urkel was like always just himself, you Mm -hmm. know, regardless of what people wanted from him. I mean, yeah, he made a machine to make himself cooler, but <laughs> but that's I remember that. That's that's a different but that but but the underlying thing with Steve was that Steve never cared, you yeah. know? So that's cool. Did you look at stand-ups too then? Or like would Yeah, I love stand-ups. Did you study all this stuff? Like you probably watched it differently than I did as a kid. I watched a sitcom and I never thought of being Will Smith. You know what I mean? I didn't look at character development or right. anything like that. I was just like, he's funny. Like Urkel's trying to be cool this week. Yeah. I mean, I definitely I've never really I've dabbled in stand-up here and there, but mm-hmm. I loved stand-up growing up. What like, were your what your, your guys? Um, so when I was watching a lot of TV growing up. Um, there were two specials I used to always watch all the time. It was a Robin Williams special. Which one? Um, I don't know. It was just an old one. I, okay. just, I don't remember what it was called. And there was a Dana Carvey special that I loved. 
And then um, Dana Carvey is the most slept on guy. <laughs> I agree. Of all time. I agree. He can do impressions. He can do stand up. He's just funny. He can do characters. Yeah, and he's just smart. You There's know? a great documentary on Hulu <laughs> called Too Funny to Fail. Okay. I guess he had a show, the Dana Carvey show. Mm. Louis C.K. Wa- worked on it. Steve Carell worked on it. Mm. Um, Stephen Colbert worked on it. So he had all these great writers and stuff. It was a huge failure. <laughs> it's just a documentary about that. But you see how. Sharp that guy is, and you probably your younger fans yeah. have no they don't idea know who, who we're talking about. Who yeah. we're even talking about right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Dana Carvey. I used Saturday to watch Night Live it. too? Oh, yeah, Saturday Night Live. I watched a lot of old Saturday Night Live because I just watched a lot of reruns on Comedy Central of everything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then um, they used to run a lot of that stuff. Yeah, it, Comedy Central used to be before South Park really took off. Um, I remember that. It was all just I mean, it was like South Park and then just old stand-up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I used to watch a lot of that. And then of course, like uh, you know, Jamie Foxx, who I also look up to a lot because he not only can do stand-up and a living color, but also he um played Ray. Played Shit. Ray, like got an Academy Award for being like a real actor, and he can also people take him seriously as a musician. Kanye Gold Digger was yeah, huge. Man, I mean, Shit. You know, Jamie Foxx makes good music. Yeah. And um and uh, you know, of you know, of course, like Eddie Murphy and Dave Chappelle and Cat Williams, you yeah. know. Yeah. What Whatever so. happened to Cat? He's still out there. Is he still out there? Still Is out he there. still crazy? He's uh, you know, he's unique. He's he's he's, he's an artist. He's figuring it out. Well, people always say, I don't know, man. I mean, Cat, Cat Williams. Yeah, who knows what's going on with Cat Williams? Because yeah. <laughs> like, he was so good. Yeah. Remember the one? He looks like a, a miniature leprechaun where he's wearing that green suit. Oh yeah, that yeah, That was like yeah. such a good special. Oh, Cat Williams, genius. Genius. Yeah, for sure. And I haven't seen a good one since. It seems like. Who knows? Yeah, it's a shame. It's tough to stay on top. They might say, you know, it's a, lot of, a lot of people like to blame just the Hollywood machine. You know, it's a lot of weird shit going on in Hollywood. Yeah, you know? that's true. Yeah. That's true. I stay away from all that. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to make my money. Bro. Yeah. yeah. So what happened on Wild and Out? So you're doing Wild and Out, you get the big gig, you're feeling good? Yeah, I did Wild and Out for uh, eight seasons, six years. What was it like in the beginning? It was scary or? It was fun. It was fun. Because it was taped, right? It wasn't live? It was taped. It was okay. taped. And, you know. So you I, could fuck around a little bit. Yeah, we could fuck around. Well, I, I learned a lot about television through, work, through doing Wild and Out. Like, what do you mean? Because, like, we would shoot. And this is what a lot of people don't realize, you know, is um, people are always like, wow, how are you guys so on point all the time? And the thing about it is we're not on point all the time. We, we shoot for a good two and a half hours and they cut it down to 20 minutes. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of jokes that don't hit. There's a lot of times we do stutter and, mm-hmm. and fuck up, you know. And I remember my first episode or two being like, ah, man, I messed that joke up. I'm going to look so stupid on TV. Mm-hmm. And then watching TV and they, they completely cut it out and being like, oh. They're not trying to make you look bad. Right. They're trying right. to make you look good. Like, oh, I understand how this works now, you know. Um, and we'd shoot like two to three episodes a day. And just knock them out. Because I remember even watching Who's Line um, and being like, wow, these guys are so good. Mm-hmm. And then also learning that Who's Line, they would shoot for hours and hours. you know, And, not, and, and the, what you see is the best of that little session. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm like, oh, okay. So as the seasons went on and we shot more and more episodes, I, I wasn't, I could relax more. I just have fun mm-hmm. and not be so like worried about it. Because I'm like, oh, okay. I can go out there, fuck around, have fun. And there's a safety net. Yeah, there's a safety net. And if I do a joke that completely falls flat, it's probably gonna just be on the cutting room floor, and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you know? that's cool. What did you like? What was the process for you? Like, I'm always interested in kind of the the mind behind the comedian. Like, were you writing a lot, or was it, you know, for an episode? Were you writing for the guests too, or were you just so, doing you? So for a while or not, people always ask like if it's if it's scripted or not. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no scripts, but I always tell them this. It's like, um, you know, we only play maybe five games over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. So of course, when you're practicing or when you're when you're blocking on stage, it's what like What does that mean? Oh, blocking. Yeah, you know, normal people. I don't know what the fucking blocking <laughs> so is. Blocking I is think a, in, ta- in football. Right, right. He's, he's in the block <laughs> when you're blocking on stage, it's um it's they tell you it's where you're supposed to be on the stage. And they have it marked or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So it's like for certain games it's like, hey make sure you go to this part in stage, the camera's right here. Make sure you look at this part. Uh, make sure you know you're not turning your back towards mm-hmm. this camera, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. we'll go over this for for staging and blocking. Mm-hmm. And during rehearsal, you might be like, "Hold on, let's hold for that play." That's a that's a, that's a far away one. On that's a that's a point, that's a far kids. one. Though. This stays. This stays to show what a pro he is. <laughs> okay, well, it's almost gone. All right, I think we're and good. continue. And <laughs> so it's like, of course, when you're kind of running through these games. Um, you know, sometimes we'll do them and someone might say something during during that and be like, oh, yo, that's funny. Mm-hmm. You should do that. And it's like, okay, then you lock it in. Yeah. And the night before we shoot every episode, we'll know what games we're playing. Mm-hmm. 
and we'll know who the guest is going to be. So you can, if you want, write some stuff for the guest, you know. Yeah. Or you can you can have jokes ready, you know what I'm saying? But then there was also, you know, there's people that come prepared and people that go completely off the top and it's it's a, it's a mix of both. You yeah, know? depending on the talent level. Depending on the talent, depending on just how you work as a comedian. Yeah. You know? um, who, I know you're too nice, you're not going to tell me who was terrible. Who killed it? Who killed it? Like That who, surprised you. Oh, who, who killed it that surprised me? Yeah. I'll tell you uh, straight up. Um... Uh, so I was on a few years before DC Young Fly came on. Are you familiar with DC no. Young Fly? DC Young Fly, he was um, popular on Instagram at first. Okay. He uh, is a comedian from Atlanta. Um, he sounds like Chris Tucker. Okay. And um, oh, I know him. Did you do videos with him? I did a couple of videos. Yeah, with him. I saw yeah, that. I did one okay. video. With him. I, did yeah, a, yeah. I did a rush hour video with yep. him. Yep. And um, DC was just like roasting people on Instagram, just making fun of them, blah blah blah. And he got a really like kind of substantial following on Instagram, right? And then when I heard he was getting on Wild and Out, I was like, mm, I don't know how that's gonna go, because like a lot of these, you know, Instagram comedians or online comedians, it, it doesn't always translate, you know what I'm saying? Because they're maybe not used to being in front of a crowd or they're not used to the format, you mm-hmm. know. But he went on and completely just killed it, <laughs> like, like everybody was like, whoa, this dude is like a star, you know what I'm saying? And um, and now he's probably like, um, and now he's just killing it and everything. Not only did he kill it a while and now, he's like doing movies and oh, he's wow. like he's all over the place. His stand up is like really good too. Well, insert him here. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah DC is killing a game, you know. And um, and and I, I think more than anything, people are really um, rooting for him too. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he he like came from. He always tells me like, yeah, I think he was on he's on the Steve Harvey show one time. I saw this clip. And like Steve's face is just like, yo, you can't say that. But you know, he's talking about where he came from, and DC's like, yeah, you know, I'm like, no, I used to sell crack, and like, and Steve's like, Steve's like, <laughs> Steve's like, look, man, you can't be talking like that on here. <laughs> but he comes from a really humble beginnings, and and you can tell he's he just for guys. Like yeah, that. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you know, DC kills it, and he, you know, he's doing his thing. Um, let's see. Anybody else jump out? Um, yeah, I mean, um. Who's super funny? Carlos Miller, comedian. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the funniest dudes like I know in real life, you know? Not just funny, but who had a good flow? Who was like, damn, this l- little white girl can rap or something like that? I mean, everyone loves Justina. You yeah. know, Justina's our token white girl on the show. <laughs> Everybody loves her. Yeah. You know, she can rap and um, she, you know, she does little accents and she's funny too, you know? Yeah. And um, and like dudes just want to smash because, you know, <laughs> she's attractive, you know sure. what I'm saying? So that always helps. It always helps when you got like, um, and, you know, you're attractive, and you can rap, and, you know, on TV, like... And the fact that she's the token white girl, she sticks out. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, so... Speaking of smashing, mm-hmm. right? Somebody <laughs> asked me, and I wanted to ask you this, too. Yeah. Somebody asked me the other day, or was talking to my buddy or something, about, like, if you could have any actress or celebrity, who would it be? And I really had to think about it, and I couldn't name <laughs> one actress... But you know what I could name? Who? A hundred Instagram girls. <laughs> <laughs> now, my question to you, Timothy, is are Instagram hoes hotter than actresses these days? Um, I, I would say, I would say it's it's it, it all depends on your taste. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Well, Instagram's got something for everybody. Yeah, these are facts. These are facts. I mean, you know, Instagram girls, you you walk the line, it's a little dangerous, you know. You walk the line because they all kind of start to look the same. Their makeup's all kind of the same. Giant asses. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, I love giant asses. I like little asses too. But, you know, um, you know, there's something out there for everybody. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you're a married guy now. I'm a married guy now. Yeah, so you're not fucking around with Instagram girls. No, nah, no. Nah, I'm not fucking around no Instagram girls. I'm not fucking around with any girls. Yeah. You know? How's marriage? Marriage is actually lit. It's oh. pretty dope. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm married. I think yeah. it's pretty lit oh, as well. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's not bad. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I like it. You got kids yet? No, no kids. Are they? You are got you, two, you said. I got two daughters, yeah. Amazing. How yep. old are they? Uh, I got a six-month-old and a four-year-old. Damn. Yeah, only old guy, baby. Yeah, only guy in the house, man. So people are, so my wife said that we're going to have four daughters. And as soon as she said it. Daughters are cool. I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. Uh, and as soon as she said it, I felt like I felt it like go throughout my body. I was like, oh my god, she's right. And uh, and people, and whenever I tell that pe- to people, they're always like, you know what that is, dude? What? That's the player's curse. And I'm like, that's true. Oh man, that's true. Yeah. Just so everyone's like, yeah, dude, that's your karma for all the all the ladies you uh, you uh, you will never look at a woman the same. You beguiled. In yep. the past, you know what I'm saying? The daughter makes you <laughs> think twice about, like, that's somebody's daughter I'm looking at. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. yeah. It's hard out there for a pimp, Timothy. I guess it will be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it will be. Because <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was easy when I was pimping back in, when I was single. It had to be know? nice being single, wilding out. Were they good days? I mean, well, nice no, memories? No, I, I've, been, I've been with 
with my chick, my wife, since before I got on Wild and Out. Oh, but that's cool. But there was a good year and a half where I was like openly single. Okay, and it happened to fall in line with the year that I was really popping on YouTube, and we were also touring. So I was performing like every week. So I was like, nice. There was a year where I like I got it in. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you got to get that in. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah, I think it's important for all you kids out there. Yeah. I think it's important. I did, everyone needs a, a whole year. A whole year. Yeah, sure. To kind of get and and you know you take that in whatever way you can, whether that's um, whatever whether that's three people or, or two people or. 50 people. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you need to kind of feel like you've, you've done what you need to do. You need some experiences. Yeah. Figure out what you like, what you don't like. Because I also know people who have been with the same person since high school. It's fucking weird. And, 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 you know, I knew someone who, uh, like, had been with some guy for so long and then, and then they were engaged and then, and then she was like, while they're engaged, she's like, I gotta get it on my system. You know what I'm saying? And like, hooked up with people. And, and that's what you, you don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did they get married? Yeah. Oh, no way. Did, did the husband have any idea? Who knows? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is somebody I went to college with. But, yeah, you know, yeah. They, had, they, had, they had been together since high school or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I think the people who just kind of hook up, you know, when we met in seventh grade and we've been together ever since, doggone it. I think it's a little strange, but I guess it works for some people. I mean, it works for some people. I've, I mean, I also, I mean, my my math teacher in high school, he'd been with his chicks since they were 14 or something like that, and they were happily married. So he probably I mean, hated you because you failed. He, no. Was he cool? He hated me because, same reason why a lot of teachers were irritated at me, because they felt I, I should have been getting good grades. Uh, uh, underachiever? Yeah, I always felt like, Tim, you have so much potential, you're so smart, there's no reason why you should be getting a C or whatever. I'm mm-hmm. like, ah. What were you like in kid? Were you like, just popping jokes as a kid in class? Yeah, I was always like class clown. But I mean, I got good grades up until high school. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I was always like class clown, you know, uh, just making jokes, having fun. Yeah. Um, I and got now voted. That's your life. Yeah, that's my life. Would you get voted on side? Oh, I was going to say I was class clown in high school. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and prom king, hey. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Look at you. Prom yeah, king. I, I, big I, deal. I, I was proud of that. Well, it was kind of a big deal to me because, like, yeah. I was only Asian. I was maybe like. Maybe like ten Asian kids in our school, and like my my high school was predominantly it was like seventy five percent Mexican, and then mm-hmm. after that it was like black, and then it was like uh, Samoan and Asian. You know okay. What I'm saying? So I was like the fact that I was there, that people uh, were showing me enough love that I could beat uh, beat like Caesar, who was like the most popular Mexican dude. I was like, oh, I'm in there. <laughs> yeah, nice man. Congrats. It's a big deal. Thanks. Thank you. It was a shining moment in my career. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you know Al Bundy. Four touchdowns in one game, you know? <laughs> Paul Kai. The kids probably have no idea what that means. No, no, no that reference is completely <laughs> Wait, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so was it scary? When, so you go from wiling out, benefits, steady check, yeah. good gig. When that went away, was that scary as fuck? No, nah, because the YouTube money was way better than wiling out money. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no yeah. shit. YouTube money was way better than wiling out huh, money. Wiling okay. out money was... Was was a nice consistent, you know, yearly or twice a year thing. Mm-hmm. But majority of my money was always coming from YouTube. Did you get a lot like deemed inappropriate, or did the YouTube fuck with you? Oh, dude, I get flagged so much now. Yes. Oh no shit. Even to the point where like my No Chaser podcast, yeah. I think because it's been flagged in the past, immediately on upload, it's like I get the little yellow instead of the green light. Yeah. No kidding. Like right away. And then you have to dispute it, and they. And take then it I off. have to have to submit it for review. Yeah. And then someone has to sit and watch my podcast, or maybe they don't watch. Maybe they just say, "Oh, maybe this is okay." Again, no chaser podcast. Check it out. No chaser podcast. Highly inappropriate. Really but, good though. But I, super funny. Yeah. Super yeah. funny. Yeah. Good, but it's not joke, joke, joke. Funny. It's yeah. kind of laid back, and we'll have like a real conversation. We're just talking. Just talking. It'll be funny. Mm-hmm. We'll have a shot of tequila. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, it was. It's good. It's a long form deal. It yeah, shows a different side of you. You know, I, I think you know for some reason YouTube all of a sudden became like podcast radio. <laughs> it I became know, like talk radio. Yeah, everybody. Everybody just does it. Yeah. Moved to pod- and that was partly because you know I used to love doing sketches on YouTube. Like that was like I loved it. You know, yeah. but um, but the way things work now, it's just um, it it, it wasn't making any money because the sketches. Yeah, because longer form content gets recommended more mm-hmm. because YouTube, and this is what I've just heard, you know, YouTube, they they would rather have people watch longer videos because they want increased watch time. More ads. I mean, more ads, yeah. more watch time. So longer videos are the ones that get suggested. So when I'm spending money doing like a really well-produced, like, you know, I got a crew, I got lights, I got like... Um, you know, sets and shit. I'm People doing... don't realize, just pause on that. Like, yeah. we've got, a, you know, we've got three cameras set up here. 
We got three people helping yeah. out. There's an editor. Like, mm-hmm. this should cost real money. Yeah. That's Tim's money is my money. Like, this costs money. People yeah, don't see that. They just think exactly. it just happens magically. So when I would put all that money in and, like, be shooting like, a whole day or whatever to do, like, a little three to five minute sketch. Mm-hmm. And, like, the views were trash compared to me sitting with my friend and, like, doing a mukbang and eating for an hour. It was like, dude, it's not worth it. You yeah. Know? So it was like… I loved doing sketches, but it just wasn't lucrative anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'll still, if I get a big brand deal now, I'm like, okay, I got my good money for a, for a month or two. Like, okay, now I'll do a sketch. It'll be more for like just to keep my soul happy. You okay, know what I'm yeah. Um, but you've kind of morphed into a foodie kind of. I do Basic to Bougie, which is a food show on MTV. <laughs> now, what is Basic to Bougie oh, about? So it's basic, a great name. Basic to Bougie is a show on MTV's YouTube channel. Okay. It's me and a fellow, an, another guy that was a castmate on Wild and Out, this guy named Darren Brand. Mm-hmm. We, uh, they'll bring out, like, let's say, like three different kinds of uh, hot dogs or something like that. Okay. And we take a bite of each one and then we we decide, we pick which one it, we think is the cheapest, uh, which one's like the middle, which one's the most expensive. Okay. And then, um, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's fun. It's fun. We, they bring out different food and we test it out. And, um, you know, I'm a little more open to it. Darren, Darren is like, you know, he's from he's from uh, North Carolina, so he's not as uh, he's not as he's not as open to the food, but then he is too. So it's you know, it's fun. He's always like screaming and shit. They had us eating bugs in episode. Okay. Uh, so it's it's a good episode. I mean, it's a good show. You know. So you just got back from VidCon, right? Yeah. You just went to VidCon. What the fuck do you promote there? You have so many so many things going on. Are you promoting the Thriller Show, your channel? Podcast, like, well, what do you? I mean, when I go to, there for? When I go to VidCon, I'm really just trying to promote myself. You okay. know, like VidCon is, if, if anything, it's it's more than uh, it's more so it's just a good networking opportunity. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because uh, collabs happen. Yeah, collabs. I mean, not so much collabs, but no. more so like a lot of brands are at VidCon. Yeah. When I'm going to VidCon, I'm trying to make deals. You know, um, because I mean, at this point, I'm I'm kind of like is established in the space like how many followers you have over four million i got right? four million youtube subscribers which you know which i feel like isn't even a lot nowadays like, <laughs> me and a bunch of other people would kill to have four million subscribers <laughs> yeah but i mean you know when you see logan with 20 right yeah, right it's, oh, i know man, what you mean yeah, yeah you know it's like i feel like everybody on instagram is like a million followers not a big deal anyways especially the girls you know yeah they're uh, all verified all have a million followers i know it's you've crazy. never even heard of them and they're it's verified. crazy yeah. so but when i go to vidcon i'm just trying to uh you know, make myself known to the brands. Let them know that hey, I'm I'm really trying to I'm I'm down to work. I'm trying to sell stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like I'm down to promote whatever you guys want. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, just trying to pay my mortgage. You know, yeah, hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, what brands you have you worked with? I mean, what brands are you collaborating with now? You got anything going on? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just down to work, man. I got I got a really good relationship with Taco Bell. Um, they're always inviting me to stuff. Jack in the Box is is my boo too. Um, and uh, you know, I had a cool deal with. Uh, you know, I'm just down. I'm just yeah, down. Yeah, you stand. As long as it's not like, you know, um, uh, like pro Trump, uh, <laughs> pro Trump hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you know? you don't endorse them. Then, like, those. give me the check. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk NBA offseason. Sure. What do you think? How are you a big Lakers fan? I'm a Lakers fan because I have to be, I'm more of a Clippers fan. Oh, now no. is this new after the Kawhi signing well, or has this always been? No. A lot well, of new Clippers well, fans. Well, okay, when I was in high school, junior high, Clippers was like my shit. Okay. You know, I was a big Clippers fan. Um, and then, you know, I feel like, and then it was hard to be a Clippers fan for a long time. Like even I tried, you know. Yeah. Um, but Blake brought it back. Yeah, and you know what? Like, I, look to be to be a hundred percent real. Like, I, I'm not like a, I'm not super into it. But like, oh, okay. But I'm into it, you know, on occasion. Yeah, you know, like. Um, but I was definitely a big Clippers fan growing up, and um, and uh, and 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 the and 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 Kawhi coming to the Clippers is, is so huge. It's exciting. Yeah, 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 for sure. Who's the best team in LA right now? The best team in LA right now. Shit, I guess we got to see. You I know, know, you got to see. Yeah, we got to see how it all comes together. Because people were really excited about LeBron last year. And like that, you know, nothing really happens. I hate LeBron. <laughs> I hate him so much. <laughs> A lot of people hate LeBron. You know why? Because he's too perfect, kind of, right? <laughs> there's no scandal. Yeah. There's no drunk driving. There's well. no cheating on his wife. There's no nothing. It, you can't root for, like, your buddy the comedian. <laughs> I want to root for the guy who saw crack. I- <laughs> LeBron was no, never saw a crack. Well, his hairline was gone. I know. I can relate. But it's back now. Oh, did he get surgery? Yeah, then? I think yeah, a lot of people did. Yeah. Oh, no way. Okay. Well, well like, LeBron's hairline is back. Tyga, Tyga's hairline used to be way back now. It's like right here now. Snoop's got that thing going. Does he? It's getting, I mean, it's back. 
But yeah. he's got the long, it's not a good look yeah, because yeah. it's way long in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least it's not like Stevie Wonders is like back here. <laughs> I know, but well, he can't see it. <laughs> right, so right, maybe right, no right, one's right. telling him. Now, the reason also you kind of came on my radar, mm-hmm. the first time, I mean, I remember you from a while and out and stuff, and I didn't follow you anywhere. But, no offense, but oh, no. <laughs> okay. 90 Day Fiance, me and for big fans, and yeah. I remember... You know, looking at the tag or something, and all your fucking <laughs> tweets were at the top. I'm like, this dude is got fire. Yeah, 90 Day Fiance tweets. I just, it's I'm a, like immediate follow. It's a really enjoyable show. You is know? Nicole the dumbest character in the history of 90 Day Fiance? First of all, most people aren't even gonna know what we're talking about. But yeah. I don't even give a fuck. Yeah, I, I want to talk with the master. Look, man, she just, she just wants love, you know. And she thinks she found it. So she's trying to stick with it. <sighs> Is he ever going to marry her? No. You don't think so, you think? I don't think so. Sometimes I think he really might like her, though. But, Sometimes. Yeah. But then he says he's going to open a store and takes her money and never opens the yeah, store. Yeah, and then she never went on that trip. Yeah, they were supposed to go to Guam or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, and how does she have all this money? Probably just mom and dad. You think so? I or think maybe, so. do you think they pay them decent, though? Um, I don't know if they pay them decent, though. I think they pay them enough because I know, like, you know, when a show gets really popular, because mm-hmm. um, reality st- stars don't make a lot of money usually in the beginning. Right? Yeah, not unless it gets popular. Like, because I know, like, the Jersey Shore people at this point, like, I think the producers probably pay for everything. Like, you know, like when they have like a wedding, I think they pay for just everything. You know, just for to, to get on camera. Yeah. You know? But I I don't know how I don't know if TLC has money like that. You know. To, yeah. You know, well, maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But she's paying all this money for Azen, you know, she's setting up fake stores for him, set, <sighs> taking trips. I always wonder, like, how does it work? That's a good show, man. I feel like a lot of people um, are beginning to get, I hear a lot of celebrities talking about 90 Day Fiance, yeah. actually. Yeah. What else are you watching? You watch Reality Trash with the Wife? I get sucked into that. That's a, You know what? It's the wife that kind of got me into it. Um, you watching Day, Housewives? You watching any of that? I know. I, I never got into any of the Housewives, no. but on, in the same vein as like 90 Day Fiance, uh, we watch a lot of Married at First Sight. What's that? Uh, you, wa- you know what's that? Should oh, I watch that? Bro, oh, dude. Oh. What does that mean? If you like 90 Day Fiance, yeah, you will shit. like Married at First Sight. Explain what the What they show. do is all these singles that are like just sick of being single and are ready to settle down, they sign up to be paired by experts. Okay. So, and then they get paired and then on the day of, and then they get married to a complete stranger. They don't meet them until the day of their wedding. Like they don't talk at all beforehand. Do they see them? No, they don't see them or anything. So then the first time they see their partner is when like the wife is walking down the aisle. Get the fuck out And then out they of get here. married. And then they do this. Don't people bug out? Like what if you see some ugly girl walking down? Do the dudes so, run? So there have been episodes. Well, everyone's really nice at first. But there's been episodes where they're like, yeah. Afterwards, like with their interview, they're like, yeah. Initially, I just was not attracted to this person. But I can, after talking to them, I see why we're paired. Because we're compatible. And, you know, maybe I can grow to become attracted. But Dude. but it either goes really good or really bad. You know what I'm saying? And they follow them like after the they wedding? Follow, yeah, after the wedding. And they have like a, it's like a six week period, I think, where they go on the honeymoon okay. and, the, and the experts give them like exercises to get to know each other. And then um, at, after six weeks, they decide whether they want to get divorced or stay married. Okay. Yeah. Did you see Temptation Island? That was I, on for a second. Back in the day? There's a, there's a new show that's like that now. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Love Island. No, I haven't seen Love. Temptation where they put the... Temptation's still on? I saw it on something. I Maybe remember, it was reruns. Is I remember, that old? I remember Temptation Island like way back. Where they put like a, a what the wife on or the fiance on an island with, with like singles. Yeah. 20 hot chicks yeah. and then 20 hot dudes for the girl. Yeah. Oh, look, what's Love Island? I hear people talking about that. Love Island is really, it's, it's kind of this, it's um, what it is is my chick is super into it right now. It's, um, it's a bunch of singles. Okay. And after every I think episode or two, they 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 have to choose like a potential like I like I think I like this person pair. Okay. But it's it's always an odd number. So one person, if they don't get paired up, they have to get kicked off the island. Oh. Okay. But then every once in a while they bring in new singles to just kind of stir Spice up. Spice it the up. Group. Yeah, yeah. 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 And okay. it's shot, it's shot more like Big Brothery style, where it's kind of like everyone's just kind of in a big area and you're just kind of you know, uh, you're just watching. Okay. Yeah. I gotta check it out. What else? What That's I'm it. Watching? Yeah. What else is going on with you? Shit, man. You know. Just married life. Married life. Doing a million projects. Check out the podcast. Check out the YouTube channel. Yeah. Check out the Thrillist show. Oh, I got a, I got a clothing brand. Goodie brand. Uh, this is one of our hats. This is our little champion flip, but we have a... Um, yeah, what is that? that is it a champion logo? It's a cha- no, it's the a, other way. It's a champion logo, but it spells goodie. And then here's one of our shirts. This is one of our old I shirts. I like that shirt. Thanks, thanks. You can see the back. 
So <laughs> that's for the kids. That's for the you kids. Know, for yeah, the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try to you, we try to be a. Uh, Little, little funny things in there. With our, Where do we uh, get it? Goodybrand.com. Okay. You on Instagram and stuff too? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll check it out. Thanks, man. Well, you said it all. Thank you so much for sitting down, man. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me, bro. Of course. Everyone subscribe. You got to say that. I've it's got Yvonne. Bella Thorne coming up, Elijah Daniel, Garrett Watts, Joey Grafeka. You so said Joey's name wrong. Grafeka? Graceffa. Graceffa. <laughs> Joey, I apologize, brother. I really am honestly excited to meet you. He makes the C's in the end. <laughs> Man, my bad. Well, anyway, subscribe, turn the notifications on, and like. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Timothy. It's a pleasure, brother. Thank you. Thank you.